Hey boys and girls, it's Night Stalker here. Welcome along to today's video. Check it, ch check it out. Today we're going to do a little bit different. I've been talking to the peeps in uh, the Discord server there, so uh, they've been suggesting to me all sorts of fun things that they might like to learn about. And today's video is going to be a whole bunch of random tips. Like there's going to be a whole bunch of them. I don't even know how many there's going to be yet. I'm going to count at the end of the, the, the video and I'm going to put it in the title. It's going to be amazing. So some of the things that we really want to talk about today first of all is how to use doctrines now this actually confused me when i started the game don't laugh at me don't don't forget some of these tips you will already know okay and some of them you might not but i i bet there's at least one thing in my list of awesomeness here that you don't know yet so bear with me with the ones that you do know okay first one we're going to talk about is how to use doctrines so let's go down to Where's um, this guy? He's got a fun doctrine already. As you can see, this is the most amazing of all doctrines ever created. Very important to get these. No, they're terrible. I think they've removed these from the game now. They're so bad. <laughs> People were upset about them. Anyway, the ins and outs of doctrines. So how to use a doctrine. You know, this is a very beginner tip. Let's go. Why can't I just click and add it? Why not? Why does that not do it? There's a good reason for that. The first thing before you add the doctrine is you have to um, add it to your your unit. Okay. So surf so use slashing damage. So we're going to do this uh, slashing armor penetration. We're going to click on the one that we want to add. Hold down our mouse button until it clicks all the way through. Boom! We've added uncommon slashing doctrine. Then you can click here, and you can go here. Click the thing. Click the doctrine you want to add. Boom! It's all yours. And now my surfs are well fractionally better okay so that's how we do that one the next one i want to talk about is doctrine water um, this one's a little bit confusing too um, so if you want to get rid of a doctrine you click on it click remove doctrine it will cost one doctrine water yes now if you don't know what doctrine waters are this is them right here and if you want to get them you can usually get them in the seasonal store in fact i'm pretty sure that's the only way i've ever got any where are we here Doctrine water. There we are. You can exchange 20 of these dungas for your fantastic doctrine water. So that's fun, I guess. Um, next question a lot of people have asked and can probably figure out for themselves, but also not everybody knows yet, is how to get a lot of silver. When you start getting your, um, your schematic boxes and things like that, you'll very quickly realize how much silver, powdered silver, powdered silver, not just silver, but powdered silver, you're really going to need. So here's how we go. We're going to go um, barding and tack, and we're going to buy this thing here, riveted tack. And we're going to buy one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, and twelve. And we're going to take these lovely things, and we're going to take them back to the blacksmith. This guy over here with the big hammer. He's not even a mall user, he's just a hammer user, so we can't call him a terrible. Then we're going to go uh, salvage item materials. We're going to bang out all of these saddles, and then we're going to sit and wait while it ticks through. And each of these saddles is 500 bronze, and as you can see, you're going to get a whole bunch of bound crafting materials with them. That's another tip, the difference between bound crafting materials and unbound crafting materials is whether or not you can sell the item that you've created afterwards. So when you hit your V key and you go sell, you'll notice that this one can be sold and nothing else in my inventory can other than these things, right? The reason for that is, you'll notice here that this one is not bound. It doesn't have up in the top right corner, it doesn't have that little bound logo like all of these do. So, and as you can see, we've got a whole bunch of crafting materials there included powdered silver which over and over again is pretty good. You know, you can sit there for hours and do that. I mean, I've spent a lot of my life buying and selling saddles, and you will too if you've just joined the game, trust me. The other thing you can do with these saddles is you can donate them as resources, right? Just bang them in here, donate, easy. Uh, we need 500. Uh, here's another great tip. Uh, got these Tauruses that you're getting as rewards, uh, they do really good uh, in terms of how much they give you, right? See, they did 1,300 each. Donate that, then we click on this box to get our goodies. Huzzah, we got a banner. Lovely. All right, um, next one, how to reset stats. 
hit your P key, and you'll find here, here's all your stats. Every week, you'll get a free reset available here. So you can reset that for free. All right? I won't do it now because I'm quite happy with 50-50 toughness and armor. The other thing you can do is you can buy uh, this item here, this personal history. It's a book. If you hit the C, C for Charlie key, go to consumables, I'm pretty sure. It's this one here, personal history for $50, uh, 50 gold. All right? And that will do as many as you like. But you will get a free reset every week once all, this, all the quests reset, so like on a Monday. Uh, next tip, um, let's talk about premium accounts. This is potentially a free-to-play game, but honestly, if you really want to do more and get more out of the game and you want to move through the game quicker, you've got to be expecting to pay a little bit of money, right? Uh, premium accounts, they cost, if, if, you, uh, if you buy this, this set here, for 9.99 USD, it's a little, it's about 25 cents a day to get a premium account, and that will give you a 30% bonus to your honor, your bronze, your unit experience, all the good stuff that you really need to to advance. So, you know, maybe $10 is beyond your price range, and that's cool. There's a lot of people that that can't, but really, if the 25 cents a day is is really worthwhile getting. Okay, and you can extend them out too. You can get the 90-day premium accounts and things like that, which, um, you know, this is 450 sovereigns for a 30-day. But um, you can also get in the office and things 90-day premium accounts that are really important. <clears throat> so I want to talk to you about my favorite item in the whole game that I buy from the premium shop every week. You can only buy this um, once a week, and it will give you a week's worth of goodies. Let's see if I can find it. Military training box. This one here. So when you buy this, it's about 180 gold, I think, at the moment. So it's not particularly expensive, but it does add up over time. So you just have to be a little bit careful, all right? But you'll get 15 medals and five 100% bonus unit experience cards immediately. And then every day, you'll get another one, another three and three. So if we go over uh, to my mail here you'll see that we can get the items i saved them up for the last two days so you can see them you're going to get three experience medals and three of these plus 100 bonuses and those stack so if you've got other bonuses to your unit experience they will be in addition i average about 50 to 60 thousand experience each game for my units okay it's absolutely worth having and if you really want to accelerate your progress these are the things to have so we'll get that, and we'll remove that, we'll remove that. Uh, I don't know why I've got that, but I'll take it. Thank you, Conqueror's Blade. And there's another one. Same thing, three and three. And as you can see, if you add them up over time, particularly if you only play more in the weekend than you do in the week, you'll end up with a hell of a lot of them. I've got 48 battles worth of 100 experience boosts per battle, so it's pretty good, right? Now, the other thing that you want to do if you really want to boost your experience along Hit the O key. Uh, we'll just get our daily rewards and things just while we're here. Is this. See this 120 honor and 72 honor. Uh, 108 honor, 180. Now even if you spend only the bronze coins, these are the ones that you want to get. The ones that progress your honor. All of these ones here that only give you bronze and experience, I never buy them. Okay? So we'll just do that now. Don't ask me again. I wish that was the last three games. Because I never want to know that I'm spending a lot of gold. So that cost me less than 100 gold coins, and it gave me, what, 246 or 700 honor, maybe 600 about there. So again, if you really wanted to boost your, your progress in the game, and you've got a couple of dollars sitting in your back pocket that uh, need to be spent, that's the way to do it. Same here with the Fulfill Weekly Quests. Uh, the only ones I buy with this are the ones that give me honor, and you can see here. Now another tip, if you hold the control key and you click, it will show you what's in the chest, okay? And this is the main one you want to get, 400 honor. So we'll do that. That one gives honor. Uh, that one gives honor. You know, some of you will be able to play through the whole whole game weekly. You know, you come home after school, you do things like that. A lot of us old fellas, we've got families and we've got kids and we've got work and we just don't have the time to fill this entire bar every week. You know, and if you want to fill the bar, this one here is the most important one. This is where you get the, the double skill book. 
Okay, this 150 here, you don't get so much goodies from the end one. The way when I first started playing is I would always buy up to 100, and I would always buy the skill book for 120. Now it's up to you whether that's affordable or not. Um, and these ones here, if you you know want to advance your your swords and your your pole axes and your longbows or your skills, you can buy this one here as well and get 50 skill points. Um, I found that one quite expensive relative to the uh, reward that you get. And this one here, again, if you hold down the control key and you click, it will tell you what's in it. You can see here there's nothing in it that I particularly want. I've already got tons of silver. I've already got tons of gold. Maybe that's worthwhile to you, but it's not to me at my stage of how I'm playing. All right, and I won't bother getting this one because all of these things here that you can see are rewards. Uh, bronze coins, I've got like 3 million. Um, honor, uh, well, do I need honor? Do I? Do I really? That's the... Um, the, the good stuff I reckon. Let's have a look here. Where are we? Well, it might actually be good. That's changed actually. <laughs> the last made a video. Uh, last checked it. That is actually quite a good thing to get. So we're actually going to do that. Where are we here? Because we want the 600 honor. So we need to get another total of, we've got 133, so we need to get all the way up to 50. Well, 160 will get me all the way up. Boom. And it didn't give me any honor. So that's interesting. You can uh, learn from my mistakes, but it will give you a couple of tree times. These are easy just to play with to get games. I've got at least, a, I've got 153 keys just on me, as you can see there. And I've never found, ooh, that's pretty useful, I guess. I've never found any other stuff to be particularly useful. So uh, that's what we're doing there now. Um, activities. Now, Collection rewards. Now, if you're going to get all of these little dungies here, see the Festival Window Decoration and the Tourist Fortune Knot, every time in a season you get these little bits that are collecting in your backpack. Um, often I've come across a lot of people in the Discord server and a lot of people talking to me in the comments on YouTube that say, I have no idea what this is for. Hit your O key up here. All right. Activities, collection rewards. And you can trade in all those little goodies you've got for these things here um apparently i have spent way too much money now so please ignore me and every single day where there's a festival you can log in and get these as well so make sure you do these things as well there's good bonuses to be had there um there was something i just wanted to talk about as an aside where was it Let's go back in here and, oh yes, right. There was one thing, these things here, I've had a lot of questions about. The battered armor scraps. Um, they are, if you read the description, yeah, read the description. To accept this quest, you must first complete Knights of Flame part four quest. Okay, so if you're not that far along the quests from the Smuggler and the War Scholar for this season, you won't be able to use those yet. Okay, so they're still good for now. You know, they're not going to be useless. Uh, what did we get? Oh, that's right. When we, when we doctrine water out of something, it shows up as a new doctrine in your backpack. So, um, the next thing that you should always do is you should do yourself some thief quests. Now, we're going to find that all the way over here. Trip trot, trip trot. I don't get paid enough for all this travelling. I should get mileage. So, this chap here is called the Warden. Press F, go quests. Um, service to the realm, I just get this uh, because it gives a lot of um, house XP and things like that. So lovely. Press F, go to Thief Overview. In here, Thief Quests. Now each of these are things you can complete. And you'll usually get these resources out in the world. You know, purple rebels, white rebels, uh, blue rebel weapons, green rock, uh, blue rock, more rebel weapons, purple cow hides. Uh, purple rocks, green weapons, and blue hides. So you can complete, see down here, up to a maximum of 20 per week. So if you have a lot of options available, I try not to because collecting resources out in the world does my head in, man. I can't stand You can spend all day doing it, you know. It's just it's walking from one spot to another. Because I don't play Territory Wars, I don't need to collect up all those resources to make unit kits, which is another thing I'll show you soon. Anyway, I'm going to complete all four of these because I can, and we're going to get all of this lovely honor, right, and this prestige for your house and house XP. Good stuff. 
once we've done that we can pop back here and we can do this quest right complete quest form now that's another thing if you are not yet level 60 and if you're not yet level 100 don't be in a hurry to level up don't use these hero boosting experience doing this here 30 percent hero bot things because where you play and who you're playing against comes in to your character level so if you're boosting your 100 experience bonus per well, if you're boosting your 100 experience bonus per per unit per, sorry per match for your units your units will advance a lot more quickly than your hero however if you advance your hero too quickly and leave your units behind or at the same rate your units are not going to be as powerful as other players of the same level as you another tip level 60 is where you finally fight other humans for the first time it might look like it before level 60 that you have fighting heroes because the game's actually quite cunning and they use good names and things like that but you're only fighting bots until level 60 sorry to tell you between uh, once you hit level 60 you'll start hitting the general matchmaking queue particularly with people about your same level and once you get to le level 100 you will be released into general matchmaking now at about level 90 to 100 i felt like a god in this game and then i got into open matchmaking and it was like i'd been hit with a piece of wood with a rock tied to the end honestly it was terrible i went from having great games and mvps and then slap i was bottom of the pile man really struggling to get units uh, across the line and kill units and kill heroes now that is completely normal please don't freak out when that happens to go oh my god what has happened it's actually completely normal because of the way that the, the the game releases you into the general population of players over time and it's really important to understand that you will push past that that skill wall especially if you take my advice here and you level your units faster than you level your hero okay trust me you will get through that skill wall and it's completely normal and every player you see in the game faces it please don't give up just gonna have a quick drink so my dry throat can keep going Mm. right so i've got a big list of tips here so let's keep on going um reconditioning okay so once you finally craft up some gear i'll quickly just show you how to craft a gear piece just because i can just in case you haven't done this before um we're going back to the smith here I, again i apologize if you know all of this but a lot of people don't please be with me this channel is all about helping people learn and grow so we're going to take one of our 20 rare armor schematic crates and we'll make, I don't know, we'll make a helmet. That'll do. Right, so create weapons and armor. Helmet. We want heavy armor because I'm a, a massive guy with sword and shield. We want to make one of those. This little box here is whether or not you'll be able to sell it on the market after you make it. But you'll need unbound schematics which you generally only find in when you win battles and things and get lucky anyway we're going to craft this little helmet and we'll see what we've got do we get anything good go legendary no all right so this is a very very average helmet as you can see on the left there my uh my one currently equipped gives me 500 health great for a long sword and 19 leadership bonus which is fantastic now that is actually something i get a questions on a lot how do how do people see me in the videos with 770 leadership to choose from the stats that you roll on these items that you're creating is just random you can get a strength bonus agility bonus whatever health bonus slashing blunt defense whatever bonus one of those bonuses that you can randomly roll is leadership and that has a maximum score of 25 for a maximum total across all of your armor pieces of an extra 100 leadership and imagine what you can do with that anyway i was talking about reconditioning let's have a look at my goodies here uh what's getting all beat up i don't think really anything needs reconditioning but we probably better should do some 142 all right we're going to recondition my uh, dragon blood longsword so for this we're going to need the same schematic that we created see this sword here this archangel it was made with a purple schematic so i can't use a blue schematic to recondition it i don't really need to do this but we've got 10 of these schematics we're going to make a longsword schematic out of the box uh, we'll go to here we've already removed it and we'll go not to this man that man can make but cannot repair here's the armorer see down here reconditioning 
and we're going to put, where's my nice shiny sword? There. Here's our sword in reconditioning, and it tells you what things you need to recondition it. Again, if it's an unbound item, well, you can't recondition unbound items because you've used them. All right? So I don't know why that's even there. Anyway, we're going to recondition it. You'll see here that it's got a maximum of 142 uh, endurance. Currently, it's been had the hell beaten out of it down to 44. So we'll recondition it. Look at this little spirally thing here. And here's where you get a choice. Okay, It will give you two options. It will give you the option of the original, which is exactly the same as the one that you put into the box there. No difference whatsoever. It will also give you an option of another roll, and you can choose from them. You know, I find that when I recondition, it almost always do I choose the one I've got, but if you, suddenly I rolled another one here and it's all of these numbers were green, I'd be like, ah, uh, hell yeah, boy, and I'd be taking that. But right now, my, my quality legendary um, longsword here is much better than this purple one, so we're going to keep it. Please confirm your choice, yes. And here we go. Our longsword now has a maximum. A legend is forged. Hey, I got a, I got a, <laughs> I got an award. Love it. Now instead of 148 maximum, we've got a 230 maximum. And as we continue to repair it, um, it will, yeah. As we repair it, it will reduce in durability. You know, you'll see here that we've got a maximum of 262 or 272, and if I repair it, um, it will re remove the maximum dur endurance. So, um, the next thing I want to talk to you about is honor reset tokens, which, uh, let me, have I got any on me? Have I got any on me? Oh, I've got three. Never mind, we can get more if we need them. So that's what they look like anyway, this. Now, if you accidentally go, oh no, I leveled up, oh, the return pikemen and I no longer use them anymore, you can click here and you can go reset node. It will tell you here how many you need. So I need 33. Um, these are actually quite hard to get unless you're going to buy them. You don't get many generally in the general circulation of the game. So I'll just quickly buy 30 of them. Because I've got a whole bunch of money to spend on this YouTube video. And then we'll go back into our honor node. And now we can... Oh no, and another 33 because I didn't actually think to up. Number of levels to be reset. We'll only do one reset. We'll only get back down to two. But I do need another 33 to reset that entirely. Oh, I've lost it. I've lost it. It's gone. It's gone. It's gone. Oh, no, nobody panic. Nobody panic. It's good. Nothing to see here. Move along. And I bet you it's going to tell me it needs more than that. You'll see up here, 5216. We'll reset the node for 33. And now we've got 8,516 that we can promptly spend on something else. You'll see here that I don't have a lot of things to spend the honor on anymore. Um, the only units I don't have are the cavalry. I've got everything except some of these cavalry because I'm not really a cavalry player. So I'm going to take that honor that I've just done and I'm going to see if I can invest it into Imperial Arquebusiers. Oh, I can't. Uh, who needs a bit of a buff? What about you guys? You don't, you don't need buffs? Well, it turns out everything's buffed too hard and I can't even use 8,500 experience. Life be like that, you will get to that point too with a bit of application. Now, um, I spoke a little bit before about um, the the blue schematics, all right? So we'll just put those back. And we'll... So the blue schematics, where are we here? These ones here that come out of the boxes or alternatively, I don't think, yeah, here we go, blue schematics. They're the ones that you will generally use. They're widely available in the game. What you won't use is, for example, here, these purple schematics. You will generally get one purple schematic per season, possibly two. So to make an entire armor set out of purple, not only will it take you several seasons, but when you come to do that reconditioning that I just showed you, you must also use a purple schematic. So while the purple armors are amazing, it's just impossible to maintain a set, and it will take you months, I mean months, to get that many. I think I have got now, in the entire time I've been playing since late season two, it's probably one, two, three, four, probably four total the entire time we've been playing you know well over a year 
So just to put it in context, don't hold your breath. It is a cool long-term goal for you, and if you wanted to just keep your purple set for important territory war battles or, you know, death matches, whatever, whatever your plan is, go for it. Um, and you can also use them to create weapons, as you probably noticed. And, I mean, just prepare to be disappointed, right? Just prepare to be disappointed because it's random. You might get a legendary purple item, with 25 leadership or you might get a purple item with 10 additional piercing damage and 10 additional blunt penetration it's so random if you're going to use it on a weapon prepare to be disappointed well same with armor too for that matter what's the next thing we want to talk about ah okay just a simple one i wrote down i don't know why hit your alt key if you want this cursor up just hit your alt key simple tip right um, now, if you are brand new to the game, I'll tell you who the unit that you want to get is. As you can see, I've got most units. Pike Militia. This is the unit that you want to get above any other unit. That season doctrine must have run out. This unit is competitive at every level of the game. And you hear people say, oh, you should get spear sergeants and then stalwarts, or, you know, you should go for hussars and things like that. Man, it's too far advanced if you've just joined the game. I'll tell you what, the ones that you want to get up to maximum are elite pike militia. Something else that's truly scary, um, I moved past this unit before I realised its value, is the iron caps. If you charge a unit of iron caps into a hero and they're maxed out, they will kill them if you use this top line here. They get so much extra charge damage, it's, it, it's ridiculous. Especially along a wall where it's narrow and the, the unit's clumped up, or down a siege tower, these guys will kill heroes in a charge, like outright. So, also very good. And later on, if you want to move into the stalwarts and sergeants and things like that, great, great. Um, if you're really looking for a ranged unit to pick, Namcans are the undisputed king of archery. Uh, they're only 180 leadership. They're not hard to get. You flick back to Season 2 and, and collect them within two sets of challenges, and they're just absolutely filthy deadly. You know, um, They're the other unit that I'd recommend. Cavalry? Eh, I, I'm not really the guy to talk to you about cavalry. You know, there's Evo and King Alpha and uh, Poncho out there. They're really good cavalry players. That's not me. So go and see them for cavalry. Uh, the next one out there. Ooh, a tire salvaging I've written down here, but I don't think I actually have any attire I want to use up. So we better... What do we got here? Oh yeah, okay. I know this is thrilling where I'm just opening boxes on screen, but I've just got to do this to try... Ooh, that's nice. To try and get these skins. Oh, oh that's nice. Okay, I might already have that. I don't. Oh, ho! Oh, whole set! Holy crap, that was amazing. I'm glad I did that on screen. Nobody believed me otherwise. I got a whole set of feather data. But you'll see I can't use this one here, right? Duplicate elva attire can be salvaged at the artisan. So if you get additional things that you can't use, you go and you see this chap. Attire salvaging. You pop it in here, you pay your $10, your 10 bronze, and boom, you get some of these things here. And once you get 100 of them here, see here, I've got 41 currently. Uh, once you get 100 of them, you can exchange them here for whichever type of box you want. Again, if you hold down the control key and left click, it will show you what's available in the, or in the unit. And as you can see, that box I just opened gave me all of these in one hit, which I've never seen before. So nobody would believe it if it didn't happen on screen. Right, um, how to get season units. So if you want to get those Namcan archers that I just explained to you there, you can go and get them still even though they occurred in previous seasons. You hit your F5 key. Uh, no, you don't. Uh, or do you? Yeah, F5. My mistake. Unit challenges up here. Here, you can go all the way back to whatever season you want, Wrath of the Nomads say. It says, are you sure you want to activate? You will not lose your progress through this current season. Nothing you've achieved will move backwards. When you come back to the same season, everything will be exactly as you left it. I learned this uh, from a subscriber. Thank you for that help. 
here we go. And then you click on your Nemcan Archers and it will give you a whole bunch of challenges that you can do just like the current season ones. So do that and then you can go back to whatever season you want to do. Fun. Okay. Uh, next thing I want to talk about is doctrines a little bit more again. We did start on those. But let's just I know, pick him. Especially when you're first into the game, your first 100 levels, you think, oh, I might need that green doctrine later, or I might need that blue doctrine later, so I might save it for a better unit later. Trust me, green doctrines you'll have dozens of. As soon as you've got a unit that you can use it on, bang that doctrine in there. I mean, look at look at all these doctrines. Look at these purple, uh, blue ones, you know. I've got so many of them, and I've been salvaging them <laughs> to, to try and get more, right? These are just the ones that I never got around to melting down into something else. You just get zillions, I mean zillions of the green ones. Per white ones, well, just go ahead and use them until you've got something better. Um, I've melted all my white ones down at the War Scholar here, um, salvaging, and you can melt them all down, right? And Signalacula, I, I've got nothing I can get more from Signalacula, so they all get melted down as well. And then you can transfer them into something else, whether it be Tritizers, Unit Medals, or you can try random things. Again, hold down Control, left click, it will tell you what the options are that you will get. Okay, now um, something I can't show you here in town because I can't do it is dodging. When you double click left or double click right, you'll do a roll or a hop if you're a maul, or you'll do like a smooth side dive if you're a bow. When you do that, until that side step or that jump or that roll is completed, the, the, the game registers you as being in the same place. So if you keep thinking, what? How did that guy hit me? I rolled away. It's because until that roll is completed, you are still counted as being in the same place as you started the roll. So keep that in mind while you're in the uh, in the game. Um, there's a couple of awards in the game. Um, if you hit P and you go down to your career and awards and stuff, there's a whole bunch of stuff there that will allow you to get. Uh, just like when I when I reconditioned the legendary sword, it came up with an award. You know, like. Congratulations, you did this. If you're really into awards, there's something you can do with your mercenaries. Okay, here's the problem I've got. Um, you know, again, I've, it's only really gold tier cavalry I don't have. I own every other unit, including these suckers. But um, yeah, all of them. Once you get these guys and they come into your barracks and they've got the, you know, that little see here, that little helmet behind, they're a mercenary. Now, if you sack these guys. By how do you get rid of those guys? It's been a while. Here we go. Right click, and oh, I can't quite remember how to ditch them. Maybe you can't do it anymore. It's been a while since I needed to do this. But if you can um, dismiss them, I really can't remember how to do it. Somebody save me! Write it in the comments. How do you dismiss a unit? But if you dismiss the unit and there are even these guys here who are locked because they're mercenaries from last time, once you dismiss 10 units, you will get an award. And you can do that with your mercenaries. The other thing is you'll get an award once you own all the units. And again, you can do that with mercenaries. So you go for the one that gives you all units and you get the award, then wipe them out. You know, swords to plowshares is what the uh, award's called from memory. And as you can see, I've used these guys not much. <laughs> right, but there is a way that you can dis disband them, and I can't remember how it is off the top. Goodness, somebody please help me in the comments. Save me, Obi Wan. All right, so next thing I want to talk about is Boy, level one home. gold units. So, as you can see, my cataphract lances there are level one. But they're gold tier, right? They're amazing. And I've bought them and I've given them doctrines. And I looked at the veterancy. And look, they've got 8,000 hit points. And, they've, oh, you know, they're amazing. Your tier 1 gold units are trash. They're trash. Tier 1 gold units perform about as well as a blue unit. Okay? Gold tier units only perform well at half leveled or higher. And once they're at level 30, they really shine. Level 30 Celadars one hit entire units. Tercios will stand in front of multiple guns and arrows and low level you know troops attacking them and they'll just gun them down. 
Sapophonorii or Basai and Nathan Garb, depending on which server you play. At level 30, oh my god, they just demolish entire units with Flame Curtain, which is, well, I don't know, you, you guys probably call it something different on your server. But my point is, if you buy your new gold tier unit and you go, oh my god, these guys are terrible, what am I, what's going on? It's because they're not leveled up. Every time you level up, here's another tip, every time you level up, you'll get more health, you'll get more damage, you'll get more piercing, slashing, and blunt defense, depending on what unit it is and what units, you know, what bonuses they'll give you each time. But every time they level up, they get a lot better. And once you've done it 30 times, they are significantly better. They're just amazing. Now, one of the next things I want to do is here's some friends. K is friends. And if you go, oh, this person here, and you go, all right, oh, my friend. I know my friend in real life or from my Discord server, and I can never remember their, their, their absolutely dreadful name that they've got there. So you can go add an alias, and you can go, you can add their name. All right, you can add whatever you like. So these are my real life friends, IRL friends, and uh, I've just given them a name so I don't have to remember their absolutely atrocious <laughs> terribly atrocious names in game so that's something you can do nice little tip uh, I'd also don't know if you know this but if you hit the alt key to get your cursor you can right click on somebody and you can go whisper and that will send them a private message that only they can see so if someone's saying in the world chat like here they want you to come into a group with them to get 240 kills and heroes you can simply whisper them and ask them to come into the group, which they'll almost always accept. Alright, the next thing is building artillery and unit kits. This video is getting on a bit now, uh, we're up over 35 minutes, so I hope you're still watching, I hope you're still learning something new, I hope it's not too boring, especially you veteran players, I don't know if you've learned anything yet, but uh, some of you new players, I hope that you're really learning something new. So what you want to do here is you go to artillery craftsman, you go build artillery, and you go, okay, ballistas. I build the level one ballistas just by the bucket load. I build 20 at a time because I love them. Headshots kill heroes, or they instantly kill two units, things like that. And you go, okay, well, I need 200 of those, 100 of those, 50 of those, 50 of those. What I generally do is I get my cell phone out of my pocket and I take a photo of this because I'm never going to remember that. Man, I'm far too old to be remembering details like that. Same with over here. You go, okay, well, uh, my halberdiers need more kits, so I need five of those, five of those, 15 of those. And what you want to do is you want to come over here to this chap, refine our avis here, and you can build each of them. And green, blue, and to purple, right, up the top here. But, you know, most of these things you can build in town only require green. And you can build them out of all types of materials. So you want rough cotton, you can build it out of white rough cotton for 10, uh, eight cotton, uh, you know, eight uh, green cotton will give you one uh, rough fabric. Seven long cotton will give you one blue, uh, per, blah, 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 one green fabric, and only six purple cotton will give you one. So you can build them there and run off to both your weaponsmith and your artillery craftsman to build your artillery and unit kits. Now you probably noticed there that not all of the unit kits are available from the unit weaponsmith and only green artillery is available from the artillery craftsman. To be able to create, create things that are not in those, whether it be uh, rattan crossbow unit kits, you have to go to a town on the map, all right? And usually they're quite a way away. And if you click on them, it will tell you what is available in the cities, especially if you're outside the city, you can, you can see things a lot better than when you're pressing M inside the city. But if what you want isn't there, say like a blue mortar, um, I happen to know that up here is where you get blue mortars, uh, that's where you have to go to craft those. So you load all the materials, the crafted materials onto your wagon, you drag them all over there, where you build your stuff and you come all the way back. So whether or not you consider that worth it, I don't know. Personally, I don't do it. I just love the, the green artillery, which seems to do really well, especially after the recent nerf that really hammered artillery. Um, where are we? <laughs> now, something that came up in the Discord server a couple of days ago that was absolutely hilarious. We had a guy here that we won't name no crypt at all, and he uh, went into the free battles, and he went, oh, great, well, I'm going to take this purple unit and that blue unit, and the rest of them are going to be green. 
he gets in there and gets flattened by people, by gold tier cavalry, purple tier infantry, everything. If you're going to play purple, uh, sorry, free battles here, free battles, there's no leadership cap. You get five units of any kind. There's no leadership cap. So don't take your, your white units and your, your um, blimmin' green units and things. You get to take whatever you want. So just be aware of that, okay? Um, and I think that's pretty much all I want to say for this video. Just because it's getting so long, um, I've got at least another 100 tips to give you, which I can possibly do in future videos. But we're just not going to be able to fit everything in today. You know, half of you are already probably falling asleep, or the missus is giving you a nudge to turn the light off, or, you know, Nan's nagging you to go to bed. So we're going to have to end that here today, right now. And I'll tell you what, if you've got any other amazing tips, please share the love for everybody else that's watching the videos. Put them down in the comments. You know, there's so much things. Nobody can know everything about this game. You know, I've been, I've played thousands of games for hundreds, and probably up to a thousand odd hours now. I just don't even, I haven't scratched the surface. There's so much to learn about this game, and I'm always learning more. And a lot from people who comment in the videos below and log into the Discord server and, and tell me a bit about it. I will put the Discord server um, link down in the description, so if you want to join us and talk about it, maybe there's um, something you've not been able to find an answer to out there in the world of internet land. And we've got a lot of people in the Discord server that would love to help you out, me included. So, anyway, I hope you learned something new, or you just enjoyed our walk around town. Thanks for coming to the channel. Hey guys, Knight here. Thanks for watching my videos. I make these in my spare time for a bit of fun, so hopefully you learned something, or you just enjoyed watching. It would really help me out if you would subscribe and like my videos. See you on the battlefield.